Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I am going to create two watercolor panels that I'm going to use some die cuts to create an interest for the front of a card. I'm using the Swirly Scribbles Thinlets dies, which is part of the Swirly Bird bundle, and it's currently 10% off until May 31st in the, in the regular annual catalog from Stampin' Up. It will carry over to the new catalog, but the discount will no longer apply. So 10% off is a good deal if you'd like to get it now. I'm using an aqua painter or a water brush with regular watercolor paper. And I'm going to, for the first technique, I'm going to do wet on wet watercoloring. To create a panel that is just gonna be used for die cutting, there's no particular way or form to put the water onto the paper. I'm just bringing it on to create some interest as I know that this paper is going to be used to put some dies on it and run through the Big Shot die cutting machine. That will give me die cuts that are a different organic look. I chose three different ink colors to create this panel and as you can see once the wet ink touches the wet paper it creates a spreading out effect and moves around all by its own onto the paper. Sometimes the paper can start soaking up the liquid and it's good to squeeze the water brush and give it a little bit more of, um, of a flow and that will help to also spread the ink out around the surface. You can allow the watercolor paper to dry on its own or give it a little bit of a cyst by using a heat gun on the low setting and that will not move your ink around. If you are to use the heat gun on the high setting, then it kind of pushes around things a little bit and that's not always such a bad idea either. If you blow around the water droplets, then, then that can make a kind of a drippy or a little bit more of a spreading. And that's another interesting way to move color around on your paper as well. The three ink colors I'm using are Garden Green, Tranquil Tide, and Lemon Lime Twist. These colors all have a common color tone and they're going to be able to work together to give different pieces of color in different parts of the paper. For the second panel, I'm going to use a different set of colors that are going to be used for flowers and make a different technique. This is another piece of identical watercolor paper, and as you can see, I am dragging the stamp pad around the paper. This is not what the finished product is going to look like. Because we're using watercolor paper, we have more possibilities that we can create with. Three different colors are Berry Burst, Daffodil Delight, and Pumpkin Pie. I believe these colors all have a common thread as well. Just as a by the way, I chose all of the colors in this project because it reminded me of tropical punch or tropical fruit. I'm using a spritzer or you can use a mister, any kind of a water bottle to get a fine mist on the paper. And as you can see now, the colors are starting to blend together. This is going to also give a very unique look. Again, you can use the heat gun to assist in drying or let the paper dry as natural. So I have now die cut the different pieces and I am going to use a layering oval to create a focal point on the middle of the card. My idea is to make a sentiment in the middle and then have a raised panel on top of this that will feature vines and flowers. It's a little bit of a tropical jungle look on the finished product, but you can see as the, pro as the project evolves that it takes on a little bit of a life of its own. 
Using a layering die to create a focal point on your card is a very easy way to be a simple, no fail card making project. The vines are a little bit long for my card front, so I did choose to position them and trim it down just a little bit. I like the fact that Stampin' Up! has made the vines, or these can actually also be ocean waves, but they've created this die to be a little bit longer so that I can have the option and the choice of placing it on my card project where I would like it to go. To adhere the, all of the products down to the card front, I am using the fine tip glue pen. I've taken different pieces from the swirly bird or the swirly scribbles dies that are supposed to look like flowers and I've kind of intermingled them and used some of the negative pieces to swap out on the flowers. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the flower on the upper left has the center that was originally cut from the bottom right. This is one way to let the eye rest is to create a solid object and I'm creating interest by swapping the colors out. I have some metallic shapes to put in the center of these little tiny flowers and that's just going to bring enough reality back to the abstract looking flowers and actually give them a place to let your eye rest. Having extra die cuts is great to put on the inside of the card as they are a gigantic splash of color and an easy way for me to be able to bring the front of the color of the card around to the inside of the card project. I often save a lot of die cuts if they're left over from a project and because I know they're going to pop up again somewhere and it's nice to have the beautiful colored paper around. Thank you all for joining me for this card tutorial. If you're interested in purchasing any of the products including the Big Shot die cut machine, please visit the link at the end of the video or go directly to my webpage at JennyStampsUp.com and click on shop. I'm thankful to have your support. Thanks again for joining me for another video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!